Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Christian Sport Bike Fellowship. This is our our March our March meetup, and today we're going over the topic of anticipation, and then we're gonna go grocery shopping at Mountain Terrace by Alice's. So we're gonna right there and do some grocery shopping. Um, so. <laughs> We're doing things a little differently today. You know, there's that coronavirus epidemic and a lot of us are required to stay at home. So we've decided to live stream this so those that aren't able to make it can watch, I think people are watching right now. Uh, we'll publish it after, after two so you can watch it again if you missed it. So we're fin um, continuing this study, this seven part Backstory Bible study, and this is the third one, which is anticipation. Um, and so I looked up what anticipation means, and to anticipate means to regard as probable, expect or predict, or act as a forerunner or precursor of. So in January, we covered intimacy and how God created all of us to have relationships with Him and with each other, and that's why we have a, a desire to be with one another. And Adam and Eve had that perfect relationship with God. They could see him, they could communicate with him. And then last month, Stefan talked about betrayal and how Adam and Eve disobeyed God and they ate from the fruit of knowledge, which they were told not to do. And because of that, there was distrust, sin was introduced in the world, and then death was introduced as well. And that's one of the reasons why we can't see God today because of that separation. And this really displeased God, so in Genesis, God promised that he would send a son that would defeat Satan and to, he would conquer death and sin so that that relationship, that, uh, that intimacy relationship could be restored. And in the Old Testament, this is what the people anticipated. They're anticipating someone to save them. And they thought that it would be a king. So around 2,000 years ago, Jesus came and he actually conquered sin and death. And the Bible says that Jesus will return one day and that we will go to heaven and that intimate relationship with God will be restored. We'll be in a place where there's no more sickness, there's no more death and no more hunger. And that's a beautiful place to be in. So everyone is anticipating or looking forward to something. There's this quote that said, and anticipation is a universal experience and is often the hoping for tomorrow that gets us through today. What you're anticipating tells a lot about you. It tells you your hopes, your values, your dreams, and your fears. So some things you might anticipate, like if you're still working like I am, it's like, what am I gonna do this weekend? You might be anticipating this ride. You might be anticipating going back to work. You might be anticipating being with your family, your graduation, going on a date, getting married, your future family, or a perfect job. So I'm going to share a story about a time when I had to go through anticipation. So do you guys know what these five pictures have in common? There's water. Water, yeah. Right. National um, destinations. I don't know. Like attractions. Yeah, they're, those are good answers. It's water and their national attractions. My my answer was they're all civil engineering related. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll give someone five dollars if they can name all of these locations without googling them up. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> right. um, I'm not sure about the like. I don't know the top two. Yeah. On the right. Only that we have like the the one Baltimore one. Yeah. This is the Golden Gate Bridge, San Francisco. This is the Hoover Dam. This is the Panama Canal. This is the Dubai. Palm Island and Dubai, and this is the Salesforce. Oh, the Salesforce. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so all of these are civil engineering related, and as some of you know, I studied civil engineering in college, and there is this unspoken mentality that you're not really an engineer until you have your professional engineering license. 
So there was a lot of prereqs in order to get that. You needed a four-year degree. You needed to pass the engineering and training exam. You needed to work for two years and then get recommendations from people, from licensed engineers. You had to take four exams and then hopefully you'd be able to get this license because your salary is kind of capped unless you can stamp things. Like, you know, you're not really an engineer if you don't have it. So going to school, <coughs> we always like anticipate like after I graduate, I'm not done yet. I still need to get this license. And uh, a few years ago, I actually had all those requirements and I took the test. And I think the most gut-wrenching part wasn't taking the test itself. It was the anticipation of getting the results. So after you take the test, you don't get the results immediately. They said you would get them, like, I don't know if they actually gave a date of when you get them, but it was like around 30 days. So each day you're like, you wake up like, am I going to get the results? You're just like waiting. And then like a few weeks go past, you're like waiting, like 30 days passes, you're still waiting. Like, where's my results? Like, like you feel really nervous, like your heart is racing. Like, I just want these results because I want to see if I pass or fail so I can get on with my life. And like one day, I think it was like maybe four or five weeks later, I got an email from the, the, the group that like post the results and I was like, my heart was beating, like clicking, like I'm gonna open this PDF and see if I passed or failed. And then when I clicked it, it was all red. <laughs> I failed three of the, the four parts and the one that I passed was a take home exam that you like do at home. And it was inspired by my cousin's answers because <laughs> I had her study material. So fortunately, well, there's a statistic that said the more times you take it, the higher, the lower percentage you are of passing. So like, if you retake it, I don't know if these were the exact stats, but like, if you take it a second time, you have a 40% chance of passing. If you take it a third time, you have like a 30% chance of passing. You take it like another time, you know, like the chances uh, when you retake it, it's very low after you take it. So fortunately, I passed the second time. I, I restudied and uh, kind of knew what was to expect on the exam and then the, top, the next time I took it, like half a year later, I passed. So I was very fortunate for that. Let's see where I was at. <coughs> yeah, so as most of you were, there's this corona, coronavirus epidemic. Uh, yeah. Coronavirus epidemic going on and I'm not going to go into the details about what it is, how to prevent yourself from getting it or like how it's transmitted, I'm gonna focus more on the anticipation aspect of it. And you can fact check me if I'm, if any of these are wrong, but uh, I'm just like, these are all the like headlines or some of the headlines that I saw on the news or online or on Facebook. And like, I just wanna run through some of them because I think uh, there's like, there's this, like this anticipation aspect, but there's also like this fear associated with it. And, <clears throat> sorry, this fear aspect with it. And yeah, I'm just gonna read these to you. So some schools are closed for coronavirus in US are not, some schools closed for coronavirus in US are not going back for the rest of the academic year. So schools have been shut down for at least three weeks and possibly until fall. The NBA and other sports team have been postponed until further no notice. It says, as NBA shuts down facilities, a member of Denver Nuggets organization tests positive for coronavirus. The stock market suffered its worst crash since 1987. That's what it says there. Supermarkets are out of toilet paper. People are waiting like hours before the stores open just to like get supplies because they're they're anticipating something really bad's gonna happen. They're like in fear and the shelves are empty because people are hoarding. And <clears throat> cities have have this shelter in place ordinance to keep people from going outside to minimize the exposure with each other and only essential businesses are running. So the reason for a shelter in place is there's a chart here that shows like if you minimize exposure to people the 
the rate in which people get infected are that minimizes so it doesn't overwhelm the healthcare system. So that's just a, a chart that I'm not going to go into too much detail with that. And there's like a lot of headlines that talk about the number of coronavirus cases and the deaths that are associated with that. And it says US coronavirus death toll surpasses 100. Kevin Durant tests positive. Third member of New Jersey family dies of COVID-19, coronavirus live updates, Italy overtakes China's death toll. And then <laughs> there's this chart, 14,000 uh, 14, cases, at least 205 deaths. So a lot of people are living in fear and panic during this time, and I don't blame them. When I see a lot of headlines like this, they just focus on the negative aspect of things. It makes me very worried, and like some of you may know, I, I don't get I try not to worry a lot because I try to put my hope in God, but reading all of this like negative stuff, even though it might be true, if you like present in a way that's very fearful, like it, it even makes me anxious sometimes. And that's one of the reasons why I deleted Facebook from my phone this past week because every post I see, it's like something bad, something bad. Like there's no hope in all of this. People are anticipating, <coughs> people are anticipating getting sick they're anticipating getting laid off, losing their homes, they're anticipating a possible recession, and a lot of people are anticipating death. And then this is what happens when you place your hope in things of this world and focus on the short-term things instead of the long-term. So I don't know about you, you guys, but I'm the kind of person that gets like a little worked up when I watch sports games and it's especially bad during finals because, you know, the team that you're cheering for has worked so hard, they made it so far, and the stakes are higher. So if they lose, it's like very devastating. I stopped watching NBA playoffs because of that. Um, you know, like when they're, they're winning, I don't feel happy, I feel relieved. But when they're down, like, I feel really down. Like, it affects, like, my mood for eating or how I, like, relate to other people or like how I, I function at work and it's pretty bad. So my, I guess the question for myself is how would it be differently or how would I feel if I already knew the final score or the final outcome of these games? Like I probably wouldn't worry as much because I already know that team's gonna win or they're gonna lose so I don't have to like go through that roller coaster of up and downs like of the teams like shooting or in basketball like what the score is, it's like very emotional. So as Christians, we believe that God has authority and full control of everything, including our lives, this coronavirus, and we can have peace in that fact. So I'm just going to read Colossians 1.16. It says, For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. So this verse just kind of says that, you know, God created everything, everything's for him, he is in control of everything. He knows everything and, you know, he's, he's in control. So our present circumstances may seem dim. It's like when the Warriors are down 30 points and everyone's like, should I go to the parking lot and grab my car to beat the traffic? Like, there's no way they're going to catch up. But then suddenly, or like, somehow they manage to score more points than the other team and they end up winning the game. And then life is good again. God knows the final score in life. And I wanna let you guys in on a little secret. He has victory over, over death and over everything. He tells us that this life isn't gonna be easy. There's gonna be troubles. And like this virus is probably one of those troubles that we're gonna face. But we can rest assured knowing that God is there by us and we can get through this coronavirus because God has already conquered death and everything. So we've gone through epidemics before and we can get through this and we should redirect our social energy from anxiety and fear and towards love and preparation through this. So I'm just going to read two verses that I can hope you guys can like reflect on during these up and coming weeks. John 16.33 says, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In a world you will have tribu in the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Philippians 
4, 6 through 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So I'm just going to end with some questions that we're going to discuss. Number one, what are you anticipating? What are you looking forward to or holding out for? Number two, what is one example in your life of anticipating? What is one example in your life of anticipating something only to get something different? How did you feel? What about a time where you got what you anticipated and it did not meet your expectations? And number three, something to reflect on this week or the next month or the upcoming year. How would your present attitude change if you knew that God was in control of everything, including your health, life, the coronavirus, and everything in the heavens and the earth? So we're just going to break up into time. We're going to keep separated, this six feet apart thing, and we'll just answer these questions. Okay. Right, thanks.